we're going to look at exponential regression today. I've got five graphs here just to show you the various types of regression we've already looked at as well as the exponential ones that we are going to look at. The shape of the graph indicates the type of regression that we're going to use. When we plot those data points, if the data moves in a straight line, we know we have linear regression. If it moves in the shape of a parabola, this one opens down, it could also open up, we know we have quadratic regression. If it trends in the shape of a cubic function, we have cubic regression. And then we also know that with exponential graphs, we have either exponential growth if the graph is rising to the right, or we have exponential decay if the graph is falling as we move to the right. So you're going to take a look at the data that you're given. You're going to ask yourself which of these regression trends does it most closely resemble, and then that's the type you're going to choose. Similar to what we did with polynomial regression, we're going to enter the data in the table that we're given into our calculator to get that scatter plot. And then we're going to use our technology, in this case a calculator, to determine that curve of best fit. The steps are the same as what we did before, but this time when you go into the stat menu, you're gonna arrow over to calculate, and then you're gonna go all the way down to number zero, and that is going to give you your exponential regression. The function of the equation is going to be the y equals ab to the power of x that we use for exponential growth or decay. We know it's going to be an exponential growth function anytime b is greater than zero. So if this base is greater than zero, that means our function is growing. And so as we move across the graph, we're multiplying those values by the same ratio every time. It's going to be an exponential decay function if b is between 0 and 1. Remember, b can never equal 0, it can never equal 1, and it also cannot be a negative number. So if b is uh, greater than 0 or less than 1, it's a decay function. And again, as we move from left to right on the graph, those y values are decreasing. So basically, we're falling as we move from left to right. First thing you always want to do in an example is identify what are the two things we're comparing. So even before you look at a table of values, if you read the question, you're going to ask yourself what are the two things we're comparing and sometimes there's units in there that are going to give you a clue. In this particular case, we're looking at days, which is a unit of time, and we're comparing that to the number of fruit flies that we have in our environment. Then you're going to ask yourself, okay, these are the two things we're comparing, which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. And remember, independent does not necessarily come first. Well, we know that the number of flies we have depends on the day that we happen to be on. So we're going to make a note of that and we're going to say, okay, if the number of flies is the dependent variable, that means the day that we're on is the independent variable. We're going to go over to our graph. We're always going to do a sketch and we're just going to put that on here. So this is going to be the day on the x-axis, and this is going to be the number of flies on the y-axis. That means when we enter this into the calculator, the days on the x-axis will go into list 1. The number of flies on the y-axis will be entered into list 2. All right, grab your calculator, and we're going to try this together, getting practice in putting the data. First thing we're going to do, if it's regression, is we're going to go into y equals, and we're going to turn on the stat plot. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna press enter. Then we're going to go into the window and this is where it helps to have your axes labeled. We can see that days goes on the x-axis. So in the case of this one, zero is our minimum value. We're increasing by one all the way across. Five is our maximum. I wanna be a little bit lower than zero and this will allow me to see the y-axis and I wanna be a little bit higher than five. So let's just keep it as 10. If I'm going from negative one to 10, a scale of one would be appropriate. My minimum number of flies is 70. My maximum number is 111. So I wanna be a little bit lower than 70. So I don't know, maybe let's do 60. And my maximum, we wanna be a little bit higher. So let's maybe try 120. And if I'm moving from 60 to 120, maybe let's put a scale of 10. Once we have the window set, we're going to input the data by going into the stat menu. And then we're going to go into edit number one, so press enter. And then we're just going to type in these values. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you're going to right arrow over. And we're going to have 
at zero days, there are 70 flies. One day, there are 76 flies. Two days, there are 84 uh, flies. Three days is 92. And then 101 and 111. And just make sure those are uh, in the proper place. Quickly take a look, make sure that looks good. And then if you go into graph, you should be able to see those dots there indicate what kind of a function we're gonna have. And we can see that because they're rising to the right, it is gonna be exponential growth. This is sometimes tricky to differentiate between linear and exponential. If you can't tell, the question is gonna give you a clue. And in this one, it specifically says that we are going to use exponential uh, regression. So to get there, to get that line of or curve of best fit, we're gonna go into stat, we're gonna arrow over to calculate. And then if you go all the way down here, so after nine, there's number 10, it says zero is exponential regression. So we're gonna press enter. And then on the TI-83 calculator, you need to go second function one, so that list one, comma, second function two, so that list two, comma. And then we're gonna go variables, over to Y variables, and then enter, enter, enter. If you're using the TI-84, just start the same way and you're gonna go down to where it says store regression equation and that's where you're gonna start with your VARs and then over to Y VARs. You can see this here is the general form and I purposefully did this on the TI-83 because that little arrowhead is your exponent key. So this means B to the power of X. And then the question will sometimes tell you what to round those A and B values to. So round appropriately. We never write it like this. You need to substitute that A value into the place of A and you're gonna substitute that B value into the place of B. You can see that this question did specifically ask for exponential regression. It doesn't tell me what to round those values to, so I just left them as whole numbers. If it does tell you, you would round appropriately. Every function needs to begin with y equals, and we also have that variable x there. You could substitute, because x represents days, you could put a d in here for x, and you could also put an f in for the place of y to represent flies. The second question wants to know, is it growth or decay? We know that B value indicates which one it is. So because this is greater than one, that indicates it's a growth function. And then we're also asked when the population will exceed 160 flies. That word is important and we'll come back to that in a second. So scoot up here to your graph. When is a unit of time? So we're looking for what is the day on which the number of flies is going to be once or greater than 160. We need to exceed it. So I'm looking for the that x value when y happens to be 160. Specify that I have to use the equation to do so and so I'm going to go with my graph. We're going to go back into y equals and there's my regression equation so I'm going to go down to y2. I'm going to type in here 160. Now that's going to give me a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 160. So you might want to check your window here. My maximum is 120. That's not going to be high enough. So let's maybe put this in 180 so that we'll be able to see that horizontal line. And you still may have to adjust the x-axis. We'll see what we end up with here. But we're looking for that point of intersection. So we want to see where those two lines cross. Okay, so yeah, we're good on this one. We can see they're gonna cross there. So to get that value, we're gonna go second function trace, and we're going to go down to number five is intersect. And again, you're gonna scoot your cursor over here. If you hold down your button, it will just slide over a lot more efficiently than my lovely electronic one here. Okay, so there we go, we wanna get close. And you can watch this, as soon as, my calculator says, are you on the first curve? As soon as I press enter, you'll be able to see that cursor jump. So enter, are we on the second one? Yes, are we on, do you want me to guess? Yes. And again, it's the X coordinate that we're looking for. So when Y is 160, X is that 8.953. So I'm gonna fill this in here, this is the 8.953. And then the wording of the question is important. So at 160 flies, we are on day 8.95. We want to exceed that. So on the eighth day, we're not actually exceeding that. So we're going to bump up to nine here. And we're going to say, therefore, on the ninth day, we will exceed 160 flies. In our final example, we're recording the temperature of water as it cools over time. 
the first thing you want to do always is identify what are the two things we're comparing. In this case, we're comparing temperature to time. And then you want to pick out which is your independent and which is your dependent variable. So we know that the temperature of the water depends on the time in which it was taken. That means time is our independent variable on the x-axis. Temperature is our dependent variable on the y-axis. We're always going to make a sketch and label those so we can quickly refer to it later. And that means because the independent variable is time, that's going to go into list one when we enter it into our calculator. The dependent variable is going to go into list two. And again, the question tells us specifically that it's exponential regression. If it doesn't tell you, you're going to have to look at the data and figure out what pattern do those data points most closely resemble. Clear out everything we had in there. Um, we're going to adjust the window. On my x-axis, I want to be a little bit lower than zero for the minimum, a little bit higher than 25 for the maximum. And then on my y-axis, I want to be higher than 90 for the maximum because that's my highest value. And I want to be a little bit lower than 26 for my minimum. If I'm moving from 20 to 100, then I chose a scale of 10. So let's go in here to stat. And I entered the data, so list one, list two. And when you take a look at the graph, you can see there are your data points. And again, the question specifically says exponential. Otherwise, this one could potentially look linear. We're gonna go into stat, over to calculate. We're gonna choose zero because we know that's exponential. And we're gonna go list one, comma, list two, comma, and then vars, over to Y vars, enter, enter, enter. And it's that vars part that puts that uh, curve of best fit in there. So there's our exponential equation. And again, this one doesn't tell us what to round to. So we're just gonna substitute that value in for A, that one in for B. All right, we have to have a Y value here. That variable is what makes it a function. And then I've got those unrounded values just represented like that. This is a decay function because our B is less than zero in this case. Our graph is falling to the right as we move across. Across. The last question wants to know at what time, and again, refer to your graph here, time is on the x-axis, so that tells us we're looking for the value of x when y, the temperature, happens to be 51 degrees. And again, if it's not obvious, sometimes the units are going to give you a clue. Degrees Celsius, we can see, is the y value. So we're gonna substitute 51 in for y, and it doesn't say we have to use the equation, so the easiest thing to do is probably to go back to your calculator and graph this. And you can see that we already have in y1 that regression equation stored in there. So I'm just gonna go down to y2, and I'm actually gonna put the 51 in for y2, and then take a look at the graph. Sometimes you may have to adjust the window um, if you can't see that point of intersection. So there is our exponential regression, that is our curve of best fit, and there goes our horizontal line. So we're looking for the point at which they cross. We're gonna go second function trace. Number five is intersect. And then just scoot your cursor over so you're close. That one's pretty good. Enter, enter, enter. So when y is at 51 degrees, x is at that 13 0.62. And then watch that wording again. In this particular case, we want to know to the nearest minute, when did the water reach that 51 degrees Celsius? So we are at 51 degrees Celsius at 13.6. Even if this was a point, I don't know, a number less than five, if I round down to 13 degrees, I have not yet reached 51. So regardless of what this number is here, in this particular case, we have to say it's going to be at the 14th minute that we are going to hit that 51 degrees Celsius.